everyone to the new series of uh, my YouTube channel that will be on GST. Uh, the earlier, if you're watching the videos, the LODR regulations were getting uploaded. However, it still will be uploaded. I'll make sure I complete each and every bit. Right now, we are starting with the current service tax. And if you were watching the video for the first time, do subscribe our channel to make sure you get a heads up on each and every thing for yourself. And um, of to which I would like you to know that um, I'll be you know mix matching with a few of the videos to make sure that it is not a monotonous routine that you are only following LODR or it's just GST going on. I'll try to make it up to each and everything and make sure the series get continued. So this series is basically um, be the introduction uh, for the GST part and uh, let's see how it goes. So what you can expect out of this video is uh, first reason for amendment, taxing powers, schedule seven entities, a definition I would say not much out here but yeah you will get a little bit of glimpse of it about GST council and other specific amendments to which that brings me to the very first introductory part of your GST series that is the 101st amendment act this has introduced gst now this act has introduced gst in india from the first july 2017 now it replaces all the indirect taxes levied in good and services by indian and central by state and central governments to which uh, we bring our down to the schedule list seven which is diversified into three lists. The first is union, second is state, and the third is concurrent list. In concurrent list, there are few items. Um, there are few items where it's still we go ahead and apply excise and uh, the regular duties, um, customs and all, to uh, make sure that uh, so some items basically are out of the preview of GST. So that will be discussed later. So about the union list, all the taxes which are directly dealt with the, the union, basically the central income, excise, corporation, service, uh, central state tax, stamp duty in respect of bill of exchange, check, etc. Uh, in the terms of the state, what we have is taxes on land building, tax, excise duty on alcohol, liquor, etc entry tax sales tax tolls luxury stamp duty in respect of documents those are other than specified in list one so anything other than list one is required to be mentioned uh, here and shall be uh, level with the uh, taxation now moving on to next what we have here is the timeline now speaking about the timeline uh, in the year 2006 the idea was introduced and the first uh, discussion paper was released by the empower committee in 2011 115th amendment bill was introduced and then got lapsed in the year 2014 the constitution 122nd bill amendment was introduced in the lok sabha and subsequently the amendment act that is 101st amendment act was enacted to which September 2016 the journey starts uh, the first GNC council meeting was uh, um, I mean considered and uh, on March 2017 GST council recommend the CGST SGST IGST UTGST and compensation says act we will uh, go through of each and every details in the coming series so do not worry the timeline is there you just uh, need to download it from the description all the entire presentation is on the description also the uh, um, the link for the telegram group is there so you can join it to make sure you're regularly updated in april 2017 uh, these acts were passed in may 2017 the gst council recommend all the rules to which on 30th June all state except Jammu and Kashmir uh, passed their SGST Act on the 1st July 2017 when GST was launched. In the year 2017 July 8th, SGST Act was passed by Jammu and Kashmir, uh, CGST and IGST ordinances promulgated to uh, extend GST to Jammu and Kashmir. So there are we are currently getting uh, notified amendment rules dealing with the ID related issue, revision of rates, clarification and communication with the taxpayer. The best part is um, 
everything has been uh, come together or there is no multiple law that you have to go to uh, go through study remember so uh, con providing uh, everything at one space makes it quite easier to understand gst in a better and uh, in in a formal way what was the impact of gst now this was the structure when the uh, gst was not introduced there were central uh, state uh, administrations uh, the multiple procedures uh, there were vat luxury electricity duty entertainment entry tax octroi whatnot now when the gst was introduced a single tax system was delivered a single administration was there a uniform law was there a computerized uniform procedure was there which made gst uh, very easy to function when it comes to the indirect taxation a lot of uh, challenges which were uh, we were not able to overcome for the state or the central in the terms of uh, uh, you know uh, taxes or uh, uh, the uh, what should i say the returns or the credits all have to come down in uh, in one roof that is gst which has been further divided into cg sc that is central sgst that is state udgst is union territory and the igst is integrated goods and service tax now to this uh, i want you to know that this article amendment was introduced to uh, give power to the parliament and the respective state uh, uh, legislature to uh, make law on gst so uh, basically that provides power to state as well as central to make laws on gst Now, however, the Parliament has uh, of India has given exclusive power to make law in respect to the interstate supplies. That is the IGST. Now, here is the IGST takes with the interstate supply. Earlier, you used to apply uh, CST, and uh, thus the power to make the laws under IGST will rest exclusively with the Parliament. Further, the article excludes the following. Um, products so what are the products let's get into the details so these are all the products which we does not fall um, as in part of gst so any sort of petroleum product the custom duty aviation turbine fuel liquor or on alcohol uh, tax on electricity uh, natural gas and stamp duty it does not fall in the preview of gst now speaking about uh, gst council uh, so it gives the power to the president to constitute a joint forum for central and states that is known to be as a gst council the council is an apex member of the committee to modify reconcile or procure any law regulation based on the context of gst in india now the constitution of the council was within 60 days from the date of the commencement of 101st constitution of india amendment act now the council has a very defined structure the council shall have a chairperson that will be a union finance minister there will be other member of center that will be minister of state for finance then vice chairperson one of the state finance ministers so other member can be minister of state finance out of which the multiple states that we have one will be the vice chairperson who will be the state finance minister and the rest of the member is the uh, members from this each state speaking about uh, passing of any sort of resolution or providing any decision which is a yay or a nay it shall be 75 percent of the voting support and the weightage of the vote is one third for the central uh, vote to be vote in council and physically present and uh, for the state <coughs> For the state, it is going to be two-third weight in council. So they are present there, voting, and um, that's we are how we are going to pass uh, the uh, respective decision around it. So what all GST uh, council make recommendation on? So they consider the taxes to be subsumed, uh, subsumed uh, taxes exempted from goods or services. They talk about the model of the GST law, the threshold limits, rate of the taxes special rate for additional resources special statute for some state inclusion of petroleum products uh, which is yet to be considered i believe and any other matter 
Also, they need to guide it by the need of the harmonization, uh, harmonized structure of the GST, development of harmonized national market to bring this everything down together. Now, as this is an interactive review video, we are not going to each and every um, points that has been mentioned here. Now, with the law that has been created, that will give a heads up on each and everything. We will go back and forth to the presentation to make sure that you are connecting with me to the next videos as well. Speaking about the restriction on tax imposition. Now, about this article, it was existing article which restricted the state from passing any law that allowed to collect tax on the scale on sale or purchase of goods either outside the state or in the case of import transaction which was not allowed earlier however that has been allowed now it was further amended instead of sale or purchase the term was re replaced with supply and this has introduced a gst in picture now the distribution will be done accordingly speaking about 20 uh, uh article 269a um levy and collection of gst for interstate supply now where 246a gives the parliament exclusive power to make law in respect to the interstate the manner of distribution of revenue from such supply between center and state is covered under this now this gives the uh right for and uh, authority to center to go ahead and distribute the tax collected in the way of IGST in the manner which is uh, interstate uh, uh, supply or possibly can be an import right now it allows the GST council to frame rules in this regard import of goods or services will also be called as interstate supplies the reason uh, even import it's considered uh, to be applied with IGST. Now, this gives the central government the power to levy IGST on import transaction. Now, import of goods which were subjected to countervailing duty in the earlier scheme of taxation. IGST levy helps a taxpayer to avail the credit of IGST paid on import uh, along with the supply chain, which was not possible before. Now, something uh, I wanted to go ahead and uh, understand this. So, a countervailing duty, first of all, a countervailing duty is divided on any kind of import of the products which are being manufactured in India or possibly of uh, that can be manufactured in India. So, just to avoid any kind of loss due to the import that could have been avoided if the product or something which is being imported have been uh, uh, I mean prepared in India that would lead to uh, taxation by the specific state so to avoid uh, such loss a countervailing duty was levied now to this um, earlier we used to discuss about of SINVAT uh, credit where you used to check all those uh, measures not going into much of the details but there was not exactly an easy procedure now with the scheme of IGST it helps the taxpayer to avail the credit in the paid of import along with the supply chain which was not possible before now the series of custom will also be uploaded but there's a lot of to upload and uh, i am just working uh, on this channel we're soon plan to expand uh, the quantity of the videos that get uploaded for the channel to make sure that you are getting a heads up on each and everything so yeah i mean uh, 269a all in all is basically uh, allows the central to go ahead and distribute the tax collected by the way of import or interstate tax to the state as well as to the center right moving on on article 366 the addition of important definition now um was an existing article to include the following definition and it was amended to include good and service tax means taxes on supply of good nothing to do with sale and purchase it can be a uh, supply of goods or service or both it is important to note that the supply of alcoholic liquor for human consumption is excluded from the preview of gst um speaking about the services refer to anything other than goods very easy now state includes union territory within the legislature so these are the uh, bit of the definition nothing much again being again the introduction the second video that i'll prepare will be all about definition we really want to uh, go through this speaking about the compensation to state and the life slide on this video and uh, let me just tell you this video has uh, in the description box you can find the presentation for yourself now very simple 
it contain it contains the provisions provide relief to the state on account of revenue lost to the state arising due to the implementation of gst now it has a validity period of five years the good and service tax compensation to state was born as a result so it's very simple and basic when the states uh, were against the gst because of uh, the possible losses that they can face by the new indirect tax law what did the central do they uh, actually went ahead and uh, passed a compensation to state tax act which was for five years after the gst picture to make sure that any loss that are being incurred they can go ahead and cover it up also uh, when uh, the amendment act was passed and the council meeting was holding on uh, holding on to it from a year after GST started to come into a picture to make sure the uh, the old uh, indirect taxes law can be covered up in the period of one year, all the paperwork and everything that is required that can be totally taken care of. So yeah, that's uh, everything that I wanted to discuss about and thank you so much for your time today. Um, yourself, have a good one. Uh, do subscribe to the channel. Uh, let me know if any changes that you require. The presentation will be in the description and uh, that'd be all. Thank you.